Mark asks about timeline. Look for inflation is coming down and cuts were to start, say, next year sometime. Where does that leave recession? And what does that look like? Um, so there's kind of a lot in there. So I think inflation, as I shared on the daily financial news, at least in the CPI headline, will be sub 3%. Uh, the next report, which I think is July 12th. Uh, and then I think it's a slow grind lower from there. I think we could be at two and a half by September, October, because I think housing or shelter, as it's called in the CPI print, will start to roll over. Uh, so let's call it three and a, or two and a half by, I don't know, uh, you know, Halloween, October 31st, whatever. Uh, I don't think the Fed cuts all year. I don't think any of that changes. Um I think the first cut is kind of late Q1, call it March to June. So let's call it Q1, Q2 next year. Uh, you know, I think this recession is going to be very different from the last four we've gone through. I actually think we're in a recession, but it is something that is pretty uncommon. It's called a rolling recession. What is a rolling recession? A rolling recession is something that hits specific industries harder than others at different times. I think that is no question. Housing is in a depression. Uh, you know, transactions went from six and a half to four, as an example. Travel is going bonkers, as an example. So we may not have a statistical two quarters of negative GDP growth. We may not have the big shoot up in a, unemployment, but you will have, you know, job movement. Um, so I think we're in a rolling recession. Uh, I do think the Economic Bureau of Labor and Statistics will call a recession. Uh, I still think it starts sometime this year, uh, but I will admit, I mean, one thing that that I've started to admit is is Jerome Powell's wish for a soft landing. The odds of that are increasing. It is. Right. I, I put them at 5% just because, you know, saying that something's impossible is I've learned that is unwise. Uh, so it's up from that. It might be as high as 20% today, which, again, is, you know, roughly one in four or it's a one in five, exactly. So one in five. So that's quite a move from one in 20 to one in five. Uh, it's not my base case, but I will admit that the odds are looking better. So that's kind of, kind of all of my thoughts. I don't, and again, the biggest thing for this channel is the 30 year mortgage. I think what happens once the fed declares tomorrow that we have a pause, then they talk tough and, you know, blah, 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 data dependent, we're going to get a pause next month because inflation is going to be even lower. Then the pause kind of just moves forward. What's going to happen eventually? I don't think it starts tomorrow in earnest, but by July 13th, which is the day after CPI next month, I think you're going to see margin compression. We have been stretched. We're at three standard deviations for the 30-year mortgage compared to uh, what it usually is compared to the 10-year. Historically, it's 180 basis points. Today, it's 323. It does not, nothing stays that stretched forever, right? Three standard deviations is crazy. So I think we're about four weeks from meeting meaningful drops in interest rates. So I think interest rates on mortgage debt comes in, even though the Fed, Fed is flat. So I guess what I'm saying is I don't think the Fed has to cut for us to get lower rates. I think there's an easy 100 basis point drop over the next three to four months once we know the Fed is done. And that's all margin compression. So we could be at six, which is what I've been calling for by the end of August or September. Uh, and again, that's with the Fed not cutting. So those are all my thoughts on that.